Oh, hey, it's the Game of Thrones final season trailer, and it was released during the Super Bowl. Oh, wait. Warning spoilers in this video for the final season of Game of Thrones. You've been warned. Don't watch if you don't want to be spoiler free for the final season of Game of Thrones. So I just got done analyzing Entertainment Weekly's release promo photos for the final season of Game of Thrones and then <sighs> the trailer drops. When it rains, it pours. Delicious Game of Thrones content. So unfortunately there's going to be a lot of Game of Thrones videos this week. Sorry, but not really. I get to talk about Game of Thrones. All right, we got the season eight trailer for the final season of Game of Thrones, and my God, is it a thing of beauty. What I love is that it's basically just hyping up the huge ass battle at Winterfell between the living and the dead. Also, this trailer totally ruined some of my detective work in the Entertainment Weekly video because it confirmed what I uncovered. Dicks. So let's break this bitch down. First, we see a bloody, out of breath, and terrified Arya. The absolute frightening part about this is when I saw this in the first few seconds of the trailer, I thought we were getting a flashback to a younger Arya. Seeing her like this made me think for sure we were getting a weird dream or something. If not, again, a flashback to a younger Arya. But nope, this is present time Arya. Present time Arya is absolutely, positively, terrified. And that terrifies me more than the fact that there are Jansa shippers out there living their lives amongst us. What makes it even worse is that before the battle between the living and the dead, we see this smug, assured Arya talking about how she's seen the many faces of death. Look forward to seeing this one. Boy, how bravado goes out the window when you're watching the undead just... Murder everything in sight. Clearly we can see from these seconds of footage that the undead have breached Winterfell and they have gotten inside. Arya is trying to get somewhere to either rescue someone or meet up with someone. Or someones. I'm hoping Sansa. Or she's just trying to survive at this point. If this was one or two whites, I'm sure she could have handled it. You'll notice she even has a dragon glass dagger in her hand. I think there were way more than she could handle and she's trying to escape them. She waits for her moment and she runs. I'm hoping it's after a moment where she just sees a bunch of whites swarm and kill people. Because clearly we can see Arya has been fighting and has seen a lot of death at this point. I think she's seen a face that perverts death and the many-faced god, and now she truly knows fear. I love the contrast of her eyes here versus the eyes after the battle has begun. Oh, and let's all point out when Arya says, I know death, we cut to Davos walking on the walls around Winterfell. I'm sorry, Davos is going to die this season. We're not going to see it coming and then he's going to be gone. I just want everyone to prepare themselves now. Call your therapist, buy tissue paper, make peace with the fact Davos is a goner. We then cut to those that aren't fighting in the crypts of Winterfell looking terrified as they should be including Varys looking more scared than I think I've ever seen him, even when faced with possible execution and Fire Lady 3.0 telling him about the day he lost his boys. Now, I'm not an expert on the undead by any means, but I think maybe, perhaps, being in a location where the dead are buried might not be a good idea. Probably. Also, John was very clear males and females had to fight. So what kind of shit is this? I see plenty of people here that could hold a spear and go stabby stabby. This is some bullshit. We can only hope they were fighting and then had to retreat to the crypts where, again, maybe not a great place to be. I'm not sure if the magic of the crypts in Winterfell keeps the dead Starks from rising or the White Walkers can't res them or what is left of them isn't enough. But if they do res some Starks, oh my god, I would love to see the bones of Ned Stark choking out little kids. If you're mad about me being happy about kids being choked out, their parents are probably dead and therefore they're orphans, so it's okay. 
Oh, and before anyone writes in the comment section down below, there probably isn't anything for the Night King to res. Do you think this show is really going to follow logic? <laughs> I thought not. Next, we get Bran talking and saying everything you did brought you where you are now, where you belong. I really love this line for a few reasons. It goes back to Bran is not really Bran anymore. It's like you really aren't the you from many years ago. Time and experiences change you. Bran had the, I'd say misfortune, of downloading lots and lots of experiences, years, and knowledge. So he was drastically changed at once. Much faster than, say, you in 10 years. To say Bran sees things differently than most people would be an understatement. Bran probably doesn't see things as simply wrong or right anymore. Rhaegar and Lyanna being total twats created Azor Ahai. Jon finger-banging his aunt, among other things got them to this point where they could stop the others. Bran sees the bigger picture. I think that is why Jamie is going to be all awkward around Bran, but Bran is more likely to thank Jamie in his emotionless voice because without Jamie pushing him out the tower, he may have never became the three-eyed raven. Really, Bran could be talking about anyone in this clip. John, Danny, Moonboy, Jamie, Sam, Arya, Sansa. It is limitless. Though with him saying back home, it's probably more likely Arya Sansa or Jon. I'd vote Jon. We do see Sam and Bran together in a room, but I'd expect them to be together to decide how they're going to break the news to Jon. I'm really hoping that Sam blowing out the cold air is meaning the Night King and his army are finally at Winterfell. The look in Bran's eyes sort of says things are about to get real. And Sam looks like he's about to cry, which is kind of typical, but I think here because he knows what his breath means. Next, I love the shot of Wintertown. Leek suggested it would be the first thing we see in the first episode of the season, and I am down for it. There were also leaks of a boy for action scenes in the final season, so I'm wondering if this boy has anything to do with that. I know they probably can't fit all the North and Winterfell, obviously, but man do I feel sorry for those in Wintertown. Stuck for when the undead arrive. In the trailer, we also see the Unsullied marching towards Winterfell with Danny and Jon on horseback through Wintertown. I really hate how good those two look next to each other. Though with them side by side, Jon has the gloomy Lear look down way better than Danny. We get a clip of Sansa seeing dragons, I guess only fair since we saw Arya's reaction in the other teaser and again in this trailer. Sansa has the expression I would expect to see. She's been through a lot, but seeing a dragon has to be on the top of things she never thought she'd see, or probably really even thought about, unlike other characters. This also might be a trick of how they edited it all together, but I can see Sansa looking worried about Danny and Jon teaming up and having dragons. I mean, the Targaryens did some fucked up shit to the Starks in the past, so Sansa has some reasons to fear a union with them. Now here's where things get a bit more interesting, I know. This whole trailer is just so fucking interesting. Jon is in the crypts looking all mopey, and Danny comes down to talk with him. I'm hoping this is after Jon learns about his biological parents, but I actually doubt it. I think Jon is more realizing this is a battle they probably can't win, and he thinks of all the ways he has failed. Danny is trying to give him the cheer up or we can do it speech. Or maybe Arya and or Sansa have talked some shit and he's pouting because if there is one thing Jon does well, it's pouting. Gendry is doing what he does best, blacksmithing. As we'd expect, the Winterfell blacksmiths are in full swing trying to make dragon glass weapons to fight the whites. Look at all that dragon glass. Next, we have them lining up outside of Winterfell to fight. Love the Dothraki in the furs, and Jorah the Explorer. Missandei and Grey Worm embrace and kiss because of course they have to before one of them dies to milk us for all our delicious fucking tears, D&D, you assholes. Jamie is fighting at Winterfell as his actor lets slip, but we knew that was going to happen. And I'm hoping we're seeing that as soldiers die, they are insta res by the White Walkers and Jamie is cutting them down. It kind of sounds like he yells, run. We see Jamie at Winterfell as well saying that he promised to fight for the living and he's going to keep that promise, probably saying, hey, 
uh, my sister's a twat. She's not actually going to keep her promise, but I'm going to, so... Yay! We're fucked. The dragon shots are so beautiful, and I understand why the budget was so crazy high for this final season. Now here's the ultimate blue balling. John and Danny walking towards the dragons after they chow down. Danny seems to be walking towards Drogon, and John is walking towards the dragon named after his bio dad. Look at Regal keeping his eyes on John. If John doesn't fly and control his own dragon this season, I would be floored. It is happening, and we're going to see those two fighting side by side on their respective dragons. Though I have a theory about Danny flying ahead to deal with other threats, but that's another video. Random shots before moving on from the north. John by the Weirwood, which I hope mirrors Ned in some way, but we know the Weirwood has been used quite a bit in the past few seasons. John walking aggressively outside during a battle. What a unique shot. We've never seen that before. Looks like he's gripping a dragon glass spear, so I'm hoping he does a whole turnabout is fair play and just blasts a White Walker. Kind of like how he blasted Daenerys with his fingers. Arya fighting with a dragon glass spear, likely before the running scenes we got in the beginning. Tyrion looks like he's watching Danny fly away. Danny looks really upset here. I would be willing to bet she knows of Jon's heritage at this point and knows what that means for her claim on the Iron Throne. As Amelia Clark has said, Danny truly loves Jon, but hearing of his parentage will crush her, and it's logical to understand so. So, I feel like I've explained why a million times, and I'm not going to this video. Other people help. Other people who don't understand, understand why Danny would be upset about John's biological parents and what that means for her claim. I, I need a break. Lastly, on the northern footage, that lineup shot of them getting ready to face the undead is so sexy. God, I love it. All our favorite characters fighting side by side in one of the hugest battles to ever take place on this show. Fuck, why isn't it April already? Of course, we see Tormund and Beric are still alive as well. In my Entertainment Weekly Photos video, I talked about how even though they weren't in the promo photos, they were still alive because of leaks and scripts, but I guess that doesn't matter now because, oh look, we have proof they're alive. Damn it. They have met up with Ed, so hopefully Ed, Tormund, and Beric are taking what is left of the Night's Watch, which isn't much south to try to help John. Beric using his blood and a sword as a torch is just the best and so fucking cool. From other leaked photos, we know we are getting quite a few lit swords this season fighting in the snow and I am so pumped. So fucking pumped. So let's end this video talking about the non-northern stuffs and things because there were some interesting bits that didn't take place in the north. We see that Euron is returning with the Golden Company. How do we know it's the Golden Company? Because look at all the gold for the Golden Company. Do you get it? They're wearing gold because they're the Golden Company. Euron has brought the Golden Company to Cersei using the new loan she secured from the Iron Bank. The Golden Company. From leaks, we know the commander of the Golden Company isn't in a lot of episodes, so it makes me think that maybe they show up towards the middle-ish end of this season, hopefully in time for the Night King just to start wrecking their shit. I really want to see King's Landing overrun by the undead, I'm sorry. I think that is the reason for Cersei's smile in this clip. She is either hearing news of the North being attacked and or she sees the Ironborn ships coming to King's Landing with the Golden Company. She's clearly on the throne in this scene with her guards, Kyburn, On Mountain, and Euron before her. But then we see Cersei in the throne room with wine and looking like she's crying after Jon goes, Our enemy doesn't tire, doesn't stop, doesn't feel. But like a thousand times more mopey than that. Again, saying the living aren't our enemies, Cersei isn't our enemy, the Night King and his spawn are. It'll be interesting to know what set her off crying. Maybe she sent people after Jaime, but they couldn't find him. Maybe she just lost her baby. Maybe she's having trouble holding King's Landing after the small folk saw dragons and they knew what side they actually wanted to be on. I would definitely always be on the side with dragons, even in the Lord of the Rings universe. 
fight me. Although I think it would be more fitting if she was crying because Euron is making her marry him in order to fully secure his help. That would be a huge slap in her face. She is the queen and yet she is forced to marry to help secure her throne. She is never truly free to marry or love who she wants. That would be a bitter lesson, one she should have already learned by now. I have a million other things to say and speculate about this trailer, but unfortunately I I have to go to work, so I I have to stop now. Like, subscribe, and come back for the million plus Game of Thrones videos I'm going to be releasing on this channel in the next couple months.